children, adults, grandparents, people of all ages. You might be a cat, you might be a dog, or anything in between, or an inanimate object. Uh, today I'm going to talk, talk to you about Windows 8. In particular, I'm going to give you a review of my opinion of what I think of Windows 8 so far. All right, both stroking the notebook again. Uh, I have Windows 8 installed on my PC here. And I also have it installed on my MacBook, of which I'm recording with right now, although I'm using OS X Lion right now, not Windows 8 on it presently. But I haven't installed them both machines. I do not have installed this Toshiba because it does not have, simply have enough hard drive space free. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of... I'm not exactly at this point. I'm going to have videos where I explain it. But right now I'm just going to kind of give you my review, my opinions, on my take on where Windows 8 is at right now. First and foremost, if you used the developer preview of Windows 8, now you've used uh, the consumer preview of Windows 8. I think the consumer preview has improved substantially over the developer preview. However, it definitely still has some room for improvement. Now I'll get into the uh, opinions of it all. Should I start off with the cons, the neutral stuff, or the pros? I think I'll start off with the pros. Install speed was very good on Windows 8. On my PC it took 13 and a half minutes on 64-bit. On my MacBook it took 11 and a half minutes. That's it, 11 and a half minutes. For some reason my MacBook was faster. However, I will add a side note as my MacBook A didn't have all the drivers and B it's 32-bit on the MacBook which also has a smaller footprint. The footprint for 64-bit was eh, around 20 gigs which is eh, a little on the high side actually I think. And uh, the footprint on the 32-bit was only about 10 gigs. Um, I like the lock screen customizability. Customizability? That's a long word. So here's your lock screen. You can change this background to whatever you want. You can change your notification icons you have down here. Add, add them or remove them or whatever. Alright, so I like that. I like the ability that Windows 8 has a refresh feature and a reset feature. Um, the refresh feature basically... The refresh free feature basically is it'll kind of like restore your computer, but it'll leave your files and programs, etc. intact. Meanwhile, the reset feature basically wipes your whole machine clean, except for Windows itself. It does like a clean. I don't quite. I haven't used it before, so I'm, don't quote me on how it works exactly. But it's almost like doing a recovery disk-like thing, except it just installs Windows clean. And it takes out all your files. So I like that. Uh, another pro is that I like the uh, feature that it has, where it can sync your settings. So like your desktop wallpaper, your mouse settings, even. Etc. It will sync between multiple computers that you have your own that have Windows 8 running on it. Side note: I believe you have to have a Windows Live account in order to do that. Uh, a lot of people are going to disagree with me here, but I like the ribbon, the ribbon in in, in Explorer that's now there, Be just simply because. So much of other Microsoft's programs already have ribbon in them, so it makes sense to put it in Explorer as well and just make it more of a unified experience in, in a sense, I guess. Uh, I don't mind ribbon primarily because I use it so much now that I've got uh, become accustomed to it and I'd rather have it now. Some people still hate the ribbon. I, I understand that, but I prefer the ribbon. Uh, I like the file progress bar. Uh, if you're transferring files and stuff, it gives you more details about what's going on, what file it's transferring at the present moment. It shows you like kind of a diagram of how long it's taken over time for it to your file transfer speeds, etc. It's got more goodies to it. Uh, I like that it has built-in antivirus now, which is Windows Defender. Yes, Windows Defender is now the antivirus. It's basically Security Essentials with Windows Defender being the name of it. It's the same program, basically, but it's built into Windows 8. 
so you don't have to run out and buy. I don't know why people still. I honestly, honestly, I still don't know why people run out and buy antivirus programs because Security Essentials is probably one of the better ones, and it's free and it's got a light footprint. And AVG, it's not, I don't think it's as good as it used to be, but still, and then there's a vast, there's all sorts of free antiviruses out there that are much better than, say, Norton and McAfee, but yet people still buy it. I, I don't know. I digress. So there's the pros of Windows 8. Oh, and performance-wise, it's equal to, if not faster than 7, usability-wise, especially like on the desktop. Neutral stuff. Things that I'm on the fence about. Uh, it's a new feature that you... It's optional, but it's a new feature you can have where if you lose your password to log on to your computer, Microsoft can send you a text message to your, your cell phone with your password. I both like and don't like that. It's a good idea if you lose your password. However, I don't know if I really like giving my cell phone number to Microsoft. I could see a security breach someday happening to everybody's cell phones numbers and you're going to get spammed to death. Uh, your desktop is essentially an application now. It's not exactly just you're playing simply your desktop now. You can snap your desktop as an application on the side. So you can have like half your or portion of your screen be the desktop and the other portion of your screen be a uh, and a metro app. Uh, I don't know why I really put that under neutral, but it is anyway. Uh, another neutral is there's a new feature in Windows 8 called Windows Smart Screen. It's a security feature, another security feature. Uh, basically blocks some applications that aren't trusted to run, etc., what it thinks aren't trusted. The issue is that I'm seeing there's a couple of programs I want to install that are legitimate programs and it's giving me a thing saying that it's blocked it and won't run it. However, you click the details button, you can still force it to run anyway. But it's not really plain sight. You have to actually click details, which you think was just going to show you more about. But when you click details, it actually gives you the option to... Yeah. So, I can see smart screen being like how user account control first was in Vista where it was a pain in the rear and got in the way and went off at inopportune times. I kinda had this impression that smart screen could end up doing the same thing and they might eventually refine it and make it where it's not so interruptive. Alright, so there's the neutrals. But it's a good security feature thing nonetheless. That's why it's in the neutral part. Cons. Well, before I get to cons, of course, Windows 8 is very controversial. Some people like it. Some people absolutely despise of it. I see it both ways. Uh, so for the cons, by default, safe mode is no longer enabled on Windows 8. There is now, in order now to do basically safe mode, you have to go into MS Config and there's a checkbox for safe boot and then it's enabled but I have a feeling it's only enabled for that one time and it does you no good getting it, it, it having to log in regularly into Windows to get into safe mode a lot of times when you're needing to use safe mode you can't get into Windows regularly so I could see that being a problem the good news is you have that refresh feature and that reset feature now that somewhat offsets it but not exactly I could still see it being a big problem by having no safe mode by default. Um, there's a nice little webcam app or a camera app at Metro. I don't know if the camera app's going to stay by default in Windows 8 or not, but there's a camera app. And there's my ugly face, and you can see my MacBook recording in the background. But here's one problem with this there is no record button or take snapshot button. And it's one of Microsoft's little hidden surprises in Windows 8. Basically what they're expecting the user to know to do is just click the picture. When you click the picture, it takes the picture. But there actually is no button that says take picture or record or anything. You just gotta assume that you have to hit that. So I don't like that. 
I do not like. There, a lot of things I like about this lock screen, but this is one thing I don't like. I don't like the theory of having to slide to unlock, like a tablet. So you got to drag it and pull it up. Or, or you can press the key on the keyboard and it goes away. But I don't like that idea. On a tablet, yes, it makes sense. So you don't actually unlock your tablet or start messing with it. Now. On a desktop with a keyboard or mouse, that absolutely makes no sense to have a slide to unlock thing there. And that's got something else that's just going to be hard for me to show people that are less literate. Drag, click and drag and slide up because there's a lot of people out there that don't get the, the simple concept of click and drag. And granted, you can just say, hit a key on the keyboard, and it'll go, but they'll be like, oh, which key? Yeah. You deal with all sorts of types of users. This is something I don't think you want to do on a keyboard and mouse-based situation, is the slide and unlock thing. On a tablet, yes. PC, notebook, no. The hot spots. I don't like the idea of the hot spots. And it doesn't matter where. So, so the start button... As we know, this is also going to be in the next thing, so I just will mention it too. The start button, as we already know, if you've heard much about Windows 8, the start button is gone. You don't see it in plain sight anymore when you're on their desktop. It technically is still there, but you don't see it. So Microsoft is expecting you to know, put your mouse pointer in the bottom left corner and click it, and there's start. Or likewise, and I don't like, I don't like that. And it's a very, very teeny tiny window where you have to put your mouse pointer in order for this to activate. Same goes with your charms bar, which you're going to have to use the charms bar from time to time. They're forcing you to. People aren't going to even know this charms bar exists unless somebody tells you, because you have to put your mouse pointer in the far bottom right corner, and then, oh, here come some icons. And then you have to move your mouse pointer straight up. If you move your mouse pointer over to the left much, it disappears. I could see that being a big problem, especially for the users and the older folks that don't have a steady hand. So, I, and again, it's a narrow little 5x5 five five pixel area or something that you have to put your mouse pointer in for it to activate. And up. But you will have to use that charms bar, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But until then, uh, I do not like how, at this point, Probably it's going to change, because some of these apps aren't even going to be available on Windows 8 by default unless you add them later. But currently, if you go into Explorer and you like to go to view pictures or music or videos, they're all def defaulted to the Metro apps. So then they pull you back out into Metro instead of defaulting them to the desktop apps. Well, if I'm in Explorer, I want to see the desktop apps. I don't want to have to go back out to Metro to see the photo app or to see the music app, etc. So, back to the Charms Bar thing. The place where shutdown is currently in Windows 8, I think, is absolutely ridiculous. You have to... I'm not answering that right now. This is not a good time. So, right now, you have to... In order to shut down, you have to put your mouse point in the bottom right corner to activate Charms and go up. And power is under settings. So, you have to go to settings. And then you go to power to shut down. It's stupid. Why do you have to go to settings to shut down? Makes no sense. I'm trying to ignore that. Is that going to stop? Ah, it's not going to shut up. I'm going to just keep ringing the until it stops. Hold on. I had to stop that because they obviously weren't going to quit ringing the phone until I picked it up. Alright, now, here's another, th so, I don't like the shutdown idea at all. That, I think, is an absolutely stupid place to be real blunt about it. It needs to be out in the start screen, or somewhere in plain sight, somewhere it's easier to find. You're going to have a user that's new to Windows 8, with, if they don't have somebody that knows it, they're going to be completely, they're going to be completely lost. It's going to take them 10, 15, 20 minutes to find shutdown if they ever find it. Now, granted, some people, you can just hit the power button, but guess what? A lot of times on Windows, by default, you hit the power button and it goes to sleep. It doesn't shut down. Or if you need to restart. Okay. Another thing I don't like 
Metro apps use quite a bit of memory, surprisingly. You'd think that they wouldn't, but they use good chunks of memory. The Mail app, for instance, takes up like 50 megs of RAM itself. And, you know, and the Calendar app takes up like 10, 20 megs. You have like five of those apps open, you're using 200 megs of RAM. So that's, on a desktop with 8 gigs of RAM, like mine, not a problem. On a little tablet, it could be a big problem. So I hope that these apps aren't going to be memory pigs forever. And lastly, con and the cons, I don't like the fact that there's it's better than it was in the developer preview of Windows 8, but there's still a lot of mousing around. You're having to move your mouse to the left side, to the right side, to the left side, to the right side. Oh, and I forgot another con. You go into your start, and you go in to view all of your apps. This just looks way too busy to see all your programs. Remember the days of, well, some of you, remember the days of Windows Millennium Edition and XP where you had lots of programs that have columns and columns of programs? That's what this reminds me of, only worse, because it expands all of the folders by default, and there's no way to really unexpand them. So you just see everything. You see uninstall this, install this, help document this. You see everything in a big, giant mess. They need, in my opinion, they need to not expand all of these folders by default because it's just way too busy. And mind you, I only have like 10, 15 programs on here. If I had 100 programs on here, it would be an absolute nightmare. Okay. Now. So there's my cons. Now, overall impressions of Windows 8. As Windows 8 stands right now, if it were to come out right now in its current state, which hopefully it won't come out in its current state, but if it were to come out in its current state right now, the way I'd look at it is this. If you're getting a new machine or needing to purchase a new copy of Windows, get it. Get Windows 8. However, if you're already on Windows 7, I'm not going to mention Vista. Vista, I would say yes, upgrade to 8. But if you're on 7, I don't think there's really a meaningful reason why you absolutely have to run out and get Windows 8 right away yet. Because on the desktop side of things especially, there's not a whole lot new there. There's a couple of new things, but as far as a desktop user is concerned, really there's not a whole lot of new meaningful things there. Unless you want a couple of different things like Arrow automatically changes its color, and you have the ribbon UI in Explore. Internet Explorer 10, but who knows, that might come out for 7. Who knows? Okay. But if you're putting together a new machine, or if you're going out and buying one, I wouldn't worry about downgrading it. But as far as people that already have 7, it's probably not really... You probably don't necessarily need to upgrade. If you want the latest and greatest, fine, but it's... Not where you'd have to run out and buy it. If they're headed on half price, I might buy it and upgrade to it. But full price, because I'm assuming, assuming it'll be another $100, $200 deal per PC thing again. Then I probably wouldn't buy it. So, if it were to stay the way it is now, that's my take on it. If it improves more between now and then, I might say yes, it's worthy of an upgrade in general period. But as of right now, I'd say if you got seven right now, stick with it, at least for now. Sooner or later, this is going to probably be something you're going to have to deal with. And yes, it is the biggest change probably I'd say to Windows since Windows 95. But really, in a simplistic way, if you explain it simplistically, think about this. Really, what's changed is the start menu, this is a, the new start menu, okay? Just call it the new start menu. And instead of going to your desktop first, you see the new start menu first, and then you go to your desktop. You think about it in a simplistic way like that for a desktop user, 
that's essentially what's changed. And of course the charms bar, which is a separate add-on thing we'll get to later. Alright, so anyway, there's my take on Windows 8. I will explain the features and actually give you a tour through it later. But for now, that's where I'm going to leave it at. Um, so this is Nerd Long, and I approve this message, message, whatever. Say bye-bye.